Hello and welcome to Sport for Business. We're joined today by Patrick Nelson, the CEO of the Northern Ireland Football Association, who will host on Wednesday evening the UEFA Super Cup between Chelsea and Villarreal. You're very welcome for the first time to Sport for Business, Patrick. Thank you. Um, absolute pleasure to be here. It must be very exciting for you, not only hosting a big game with as many as 13,000 fans in the stadium, but also hosting a game that's going to be viewed all around the world. It, it is tremendous. Um, you know, we're very proud of uh, Northern Ireland. We're very proud of Belfast and we're very proud of our national football stadium here. And when we rebuilt it uh, five years ago now, these were the sort of nights that we wanted to have. And so we're so pleased that UEFA chose us for this. Um, obviously, we're, we're at the what we hope is the back end of the pandemic, so it's not a full crowd, but it's still a healthy crowd, I would say. And we, you know, we very much hope they're healthy in every respect, and and we're looking forward to it. Um, somebody said to me the other day, uh, you know, what what about the teams? What do you think about the teams? I said, well, they have won the two biggest European competitions in order to get here, so you know. What a fantastic um, opportunity it is for us to showcase our city and our ground. So we're really looking forward to it, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> and we should hopefully see a few of the stars from, uh, from the European Championships as well. The, the legacy that this gives beyond the 90 minutes of the, of the match on, on Wednesday night is going to be substantial, not only for the stadium, but also potentially for, for the clubs across the north as well. Yes, very much so. Um, when, we, uh, when we started to bid for this a number of years ago, uh, and we weren't successful first time uh, because lots of countries in Europe want to host UE for final events like this one, um, we knew that this would have a halo effect around football in Northern Ireland. Um, the, the interest in our game is already massive, but um, being able to host one of Europe's big events like this just reaches so many people. And... Over this summer, we've had a, a trophy tour. We, we've taken the, the Super League, uh, sorry, the Super Cup trophy uh, to every corner of Northern Ireland. Almost every child seems to have been photographed with it. And I think it will just give people dreams and aspirations. That, going back to that bidding process, that's, that's interesting that you went for it and didn't get it first time around. Did you, did you learn much from missing out the first time that actually enabled you to be a strong bidder when it came back to the time that you won it? I think we did because um, it's a mix of being a technical bid, which has to be excellent. And then um, there, is the, there is the politics which is attached to any bidding process. So um, we put in a very good technical bid first time round. We, we didn't come top, um, but uh, maybe we haven't spent enough time um, lobbying the voters at that point. So we spent a lot of time next time talking to the, uh, the UEFA executive committee members, saying how important it was that, um, that someone like uh, Northern Ireland, like Belfast, one of the smaller countries in Europe, were able to host a game like this. The message it will give to all other small countries. And here we are, we are match day minus two, um, and we're almost there. From memory now, when you when you played the uh, the Euro 2020 playoff uh, last last autumn, the um, indeed not last autumn, but the, again the game against Slovakia uh, that could indeed have been the Republic of Ireland, but such is life; uh, these things happen. From memory, the crowd that night was thousand. Is this the biggest crowd now? The thirteen thousand that will be there on Wednesday. Is this the biggest crowd that's been in the stadium since the pandemic arrived? It, it will be, yes. The, uh, the last time we had a full house of 18,500 was uh, the Euro 2020 qualifier against Netherlands, which was in November 2019. Uh, you're right, the, uh, the, the, the capacity for our Slovakia game, um, which, as you say, but for a couple of penalty kicks, could have been against the Republic of Ireland, um, that was 1,200. And, um, and we've, you know, we've worked with our local government here, uh, sorry, our local national government, Northern Ireland executive, uh, on a number of occasions. So with our Irish Cup finals, with the Slovakia game, for example, and now with, uh, with this game to, to come, up, come up with an appropriate capacity for the scenario that we're in. I've been lucky enough to be there in the stadium, but you've been able to introduce 
quite an amount of new technology and it'll look a little bit a little bit fancier uh, both on screen and in the ground as well is that technology is that something which is going to stay in the stadium now or is it the fact that UEFA come along with a big box open it up and then pack it all away again at the end well, it's a little bit of a little bit of both, actually. Um, with regard to goal line technology, for example, this is the first time we'll have used GLT in the stadium, and, and so all of the wiring will stay in, uh, and 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 we'll have the software, so to speak, but we won't have the cameras on a permanent basis. So we'd need to put the cameras in if we want a goal line technology to to come back again. Uh, and we've we've had VAR in since the, uh, as you say, the infamous Slovakia game last year, and we'll have VAR in again this time. So, yeah, there's some there's some excellent technology. We've upgraded our Wi-Fi considerably around the stadium to be able to cope with all of the needs of UEFA. Uh, they, they are a demanding partner. They're a brilliant partner, actually. You know, they 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 know how to stage a football match, they really do. And, uh, and we will learn an enormous amount from them. Uh, and we have over the last 10 days as they've been here. Uh, and it will only benefit the way that we stage games going forward. And the Aviva Stadium in Dublin is gonna be hosting the, uh, the Europa League uh, final in a, in a couple of years time as well. Have, have, have your teams been in touch with each other so that there can be some shared experiences of learning from, uh, from each other? Well, we haven't we haven't in that respect, to be fair, because again, UEFA are the are the real experts on that. But um, we we do have a very good relationship with the FA. You know, we we know Jerry, the president, really well. We knew Donal really well, the previous president. Um, I've known the new chief executive for quite a long time, and uh, you know, when we were both in previous jobs, actually. So, uh, um, you know, we we do have a good relationship, and and we do share ideas on a, on a regular basis. Uh, but not particularly about stadium technology in this case. It might be, though, that you could be sharing experiences and conversations in relation to the other big event, which might uh, bring the two associations together, uh, the World Cup bid for, for 2030. Any progress on that of late? Well, certainly we're, we're still having conversations. We're still at the feasibility stage, to be fair. Um, but what we do think is that if we do put a bid together, the, the five nations combined, uh, we think we'll put a pretty compelling, compelling bid together. Uh, and hopefully it will be a, a really good, you know, technical and political bid. But as I say, we're still at the feasibility stage. Uh, and, uh, you know, we look forward to making more progress on that in the coming months. Well, we look forward to touching base with you on that again. Um, before I let you go, the, uh, the Northern Ireland women's team have set the game alight up in uh, Northern Ireland as well with qualification for, for next summer's Euros. How much of an impact has it had on the game and the appeal to young girls and young women across, the, uh, across Northern Ireland? Um, absolutely incalculable, I think, at this stage. Um, we are so excited about the fact that we're in the women's Euro next year. You know, um, and, and I don't know if you do know this stat, but um, it's a 16-team tournament and 15 of the top 16 seeds in Europe have made it through. Um, only one of the top 16 didn't. And guess who sneaked in from place 27? Uh, Little Northern Ireland. So we are now one of Europe's elite from a, a women's football perspective. We have made tremendous strides. Particularly, and I have to give credit to UEFA again on this one, um, we hosted the Under-19 Championships here for women in 2017. Uh, we had crowds of over 4,000 here in the stadium for the opening game and over 4,000 for the final. And I think a lot of girls looked at football at that point in 2017 and said, yeah, this is for me. And, and we're starting to reap the benefits of that now. So. Some of those, some of our under-19 squad from uh, from four years ago are now in the senior squad, and they will be coming to a panini sticker near you very soon. We've done a lot of work with Electric Ireland. I know who are partners and very good partners in relation to the whole women's game. So uh, I'm aware of just how much excitement there is, and uh, it really is brilliant achievement. Just as it is a brilliant achievement to be hosting uh, the big game between Chelsea and Villarreal for those. 
not lucky enough to be amongst the 13,000. It'll be viewable on BT Sport across uh, across Great Britain, Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, and all around the world. But for the moment, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Well, let's, let's, let's make a date to do this again sometime soon. Patrick Nelson, the CEO of the Irish Football Association. That'll be great. Thank you very much.